بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم first of all I would like the members of the society for this nice congress always we are invited to our family dear chairman and audience I will talk about soft tissue nasal reconstruction following a tumor removal uh, this is our Armed Burn Force, uh, Army Forces Burn Center at the Army Forces Hospital. Uh, starting a prominent and defining feature of the face, the nose, is a composite structure composed of a skin, lining, cartilage, muscle, ocular, subcutaneous tissue, septum, and bone. All components, including cover, support, and lining, must be restored appropriately to provide an aesthetic and a functionally sound reconstruction. For plastic surgeons, nasal reconstruction is the most frequent and most challenging referral after tumor removal. Most nasal tissue defects result from the resection of malignant tumors, basal cell carcinoma, the most common type, followed by squamous cell carcinoma and melanoma. Operative decisions must be made keeping in mind the effect of later scar healing. A well-tailored and through plan is important, however, the surgeon and the patient should allow for flexibility, including additional stages if necessary. For preoperative consideration, we should remember that we have three zones based on the underlying clitoral support. The lateral half of the ala and soft tissue cartilage have no cartilaginous support. And the skin of the upper two-third of the nose is thin, smooth, and mobile, while the lower third is adherent, sebaceous, and thicker. The nose is divided into nine subunits, the dorsal, the side wall, the tip, the soft triangle, alar, nostril seal, and columella. If the defect is more than 50% of a subunit is involved, so the whole subunit is excised and replaced. Strict adherence to the subunit principle is not always necessary, so there is a debate between the subunit excision versus defect only reconstruction. To summarize this debate, we can say that uh, simply we can adhere to the subunit principle in case of lower third subunit as tip, ala, clomel, and soft triangle, and the defect only reconstruction is certainly reasonable at the medial cancerous area as well as the side wall and the dorsal. As there are appropriate candidates for either approaches, choose, choosing it should be considered on a case-by-case -case basis. For small defects, uh, they can be repaired either by secondary intention, skin grafting, or local flaps as by lobe de flap or nasolabial flap. For larger defects, more than one and a half centimeter in diameter, we generally we can recruit uh, tissues from uh, the distant tissues as a paramedian forehead flap, labellar flap, or check advancement. The flap. Tissue match in terms of color, thickness, and quality is important for cosmetic results. I will just read some of the cases in our hospital. The first one, this is a PCC uh, at the tip of the nose. It was a superficial defect, less than one centimeter in diameter. We choose the full thickness, split thickness skin, uh, full thickness skin graft. The nasolabial flap, which is a random flap, uh, designed on the rich subdermal plexus can be used for uh, a removal uh, after correction or reconstruction after excision of a tumor at the area of the nose. This is the tumor after removal and in setting of the flap with direct closure of the donor side. And this is the least most operative use with a good cosmetic accepted results. Another example of a nasolabial flap, again a BCC, and at the side of the nose above the ala, the tumor is excised with a safety margin, with direct closure of the uh, donor side, and in setting of the flap, and this is the late post-operative view with a good accepted cosmetic results. In this case, uh, the most of the ala is involved by the tumor, basal cell carcinoma, so we choose to, to uh, reconstruct the whole ALA as a unit, so we removed the tumor with a good safety margin and elevated the nasolabial flap, folded upon itself over a cartilaginous support from the E, uh, as we see in the picture in the bottom of the, uh, the picture. Uh, this is another case uh, with the nasolabial flap again. It was a large BCC where most of the ALA is involved. After removal of the tumor with a safety margin, we came out with this defect 
with the uh, alar cartilage also removed so again we choose to take the ala uh, the conchal cartilage for replacement for reconstruction and we move it to the uh, over the ala of the nose to uh, cover it with the nasolabial flap with the direct closure of the uh, donor side and this the result early post operative and this is late post operative with good accepted cosmetic results uh, the pilot the flap is a transposition flap formed of two lobes post on a common pedicle used for a small defect less than one centimeter and we can see that um, this is the design of the flap it is a single stage procedures we have the advantage of taking the surrounding skin providing close color and texture match this is elevation of the flap and setting of the flap in the uh, place Carry on. And setting of the uh, flap uh, after excision of the tumor, the safety margin, and this is the comparison between pre-operative and post-operative with good accepted results. Uh, the check advancement flap, which is usually designed as a medical uh, laterally based flap, it is a reliable flap used to reconstruct uh, the paranasal uh, reconstruction after excision of a large tumor with a defect of more than uh, one and a half centimeter. We can see that uh, this is, we have the advantage that we have similarity in color, texture, and thickness. This is elevation of the flap and in setting of the flap with direct closure at ease. And this, the results late post-operative after excision of this large tumor with good accepted cosmetic results. Another example of a check advancement flap with excision of the tumor in a rectangular fashion to design a place for a coverage with a check advancement flap. This is another example and late post-operative review with good accepted cosmetic results. The paramedian format flap is a workhorse flap for nasal reconstruction based on supratrochlear and supraorbital vessels. If we can uh, use around two to three centimeters can be taken from central for head, help us to close it in primary. This is a case with a larger tumor, more than one and a half centimeter. In the tip of the nose and dorsum, we excise the tumor with adequate safety margin and design the forehead flap. And in setting the flap and later on we separated the flap and left the donor side to heal by secondary intention. The glapellar flap is another for subtype of forehead flap. Its main vascular supply, the supratrochlear bundle, based on the medial aspect of the eyebrow. This is the case preoperative. We excise the tumor with a safety margin, leaving a defect, and we uh, took the glapellar flap to cover the defect with direct closure of the primary site. This is the lead postoperative. Another example of a grapellar flap, excision of the tumor with a safety margin, elevation of the flap, and setting of the flap, and this is the late post-operative view with good accepted results and direct closure of the defect. In conclusion, the appropriate care of nasal reconstruction patients began, begins with a very careful evaluation of the patient, which includes an objective gathering of the patient functional needs as well as their expectation, both in short and long term. Uh, additionally, the patient tolerance for single or multiple stage procedures should be determined and during preoperative planning, meticulous attention must be given to the lining as well as the framework requirements. One must ensure that this will be reconstructed fully prior to undertaking any procedure to provide skin coverage. A wide range of techniques including defect and subunit reconstruction while using simple as well as a more complex flap and multi-staged procedure must be in the surgeon's armamentarium. Follow-up period is also an, e an excellent opportunity to have a frank discussion with the patient regarding etiology and preventive measures for skin cancer as well as general discussion on the skin care. During the healing process, close post-operative follow-up is mandatory, along with liberal use of post-operative adjuncts, including dermablation, dermablation, topical silicon sheeting, and steroid scar injections. Thank you.